ago I purchased this Gatemate FPJ evaluation board from uh, Cologne Chip. It's a very interesting board actually. It has a, a Gatemate FPJ on it, which is uh, claimed to be the only European uh, FPJ in existence. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things about this board, not least of which as you'll see in this blog, that the uh, tool chain is predominantly uh, CLI driven and is uh, leverages heavily open source developments. Uh, we did a previous blog on this and looked a little bit particularly at the architecture uh, of the gatemate device itself. Uh, so let's take a little bit of a look now in a little bit more detail at actually what's on the board uh, and, and how they've done and how, they, and how they've created this. I know there's been a recent much cheaper uh, version announced as well which should hope open up people's ability to access and work and, and try this out because it really is quite interesting. So let's take a quick look uh, at what's on the board and the toolchain. Okay, so let's get started with the board itself. We get two USB uh, micro interfaces, and this allows the board to be powered via either one of them. The top one uh, is just providing the uh, input power if you just want to provide power to the board. Uh, the lower one is the power and the programming, which is accessed over and performed by using the FTD, FTDI chip, you can see. Uh, we get the configuration selector to select the boot mode, whether we want to configure it just as JTAG or one of the, S, or one of the SPI modes. Uh, and up the top here, you can see we've got several jumpers uh, to work out where the actual power is coming through, which of the two uh, USB connectors it's being routed through. We also get the power status here. As you can see, the, uh, the LEDs have all come on to say that the power is good. And there's also reset status and configuration status on the FPGA side of things as well. Obviously, we have the FPJ, the Gatemate, in the uh, in the middle of this, which is uh, which is nicely centered. And the board size itself is about 100 millimeters by uh, about uh, 160 millimeters uh, long. Obviously, you can see here as well. We get two PMOD connectors uh, that are fitted on the board. Obviously, PMODs are very useful uh, interface standard because there's such a range of PMODs that can be used to connect into it. Anything ranging from things such as simple light, uh, ambient light detection, to GPS, to Ethernet. So it gives it a real ability to do some uh, some good connectivity there. Uh, you'll see all of the GPIO banks, they're broken out to these uh, to these header connectors such that we can connect onto them uh, and use them further forwards. And it looks like they've actually spent quite a little bit of time, actually, if you look at the schematics and the design, working on how to actually do this uh, at a high speed as well. So there's a lot of length matched uh, and differential pairs in there, which is nice, to, which is nice to see. Um, along the bottom here, we have, there are some gigabit serial transceivers provided uh, in some of the FPJ. So we have pads for the SMAs, but obviously to keep the cost down on this, on this board, the SMAs aren't fitted, but we can, we can easily fit those on if we would, uh, if we would so desire. And we also have, obviously we have a clocking option uh, clocking option down here. What's quite interesting actually is we have the ability to work with either a hyper RAM which is uh, which is populated or a hyper flash which is an option and not and not populated but either one of those two allows us to work with some interesting uh, interesting memory technologies. It's a really simple board and it's really nice uh, really been nice to work with so so far. Uh, we can see the simple regulators across the top as well uh, that generate all of the uh, voltages that are needed, so the core voltage for the FPGA, and then the uh, different I/O voltages that are used across the uh, across the design. If we program the device now, you should see uh, we'll put the simple Blinky program uh, working on that, uh, and we should see that that begins to uh, come through uh, and work with a nice simple um, example there. If we just do this here on my screen, so we do run and we do JTAG. We should see then there that as it runs through and it runs, we see the, the lowest bit of D1 then starts flashing, which hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can see. Uh, we can see that flashing away. And you'll also notice that the uh, configuration done LED this time has also come on. So like I say, really nice, really simple, uh, really nice, really simple board, really real easy to get the tool chain up and working. Um, and there are, there are several things that are, that are quite nice about this. And I think I'll come back to this board uh, and experiment a little bit more with it as well. One of the things I'd like to do is get a RISC-V, one of our RISC-V designs uh, working on it.